Welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where I scour ancient tomes for long-forgotten monsters and bring them to light for you to use in your 5th edition D&D campaign. Today I bring you an abominable creature from the twisted minds of everyone's favorite illithids, the Thune Hulk. This creature can be found in 3rd edition's Monster Manual 5, and it is pretty terrifying. Essentially, the Thune Hulk is a result of experiments that would even be considered twisted by some mind flayers. The Thune Hulk is an amalgamation of flesh, metal, and magic. The flesh in the Thune Hulk comes from mind flayers who have basically been deemed unworthy by the Elder Brain or have messed up in some way or another, and are then sacrificed to make these creatures. They do this by performing some profane ritual where these creatures are literally birthed from pods. What comes out of those pods is the Thune Hulk, which is a mindless slave that serves only its Mind Flayer masters. These creatures perfectly supplement everything that Mind Flayers lack, brawn. And this makes sense, of course, because that's by design. Mind Flayers are smart enough to know that they don't have brawn, and they're also twisted enough to create something that does. Another great thing is that these creatures are not affected by the Mind Flayers' Mind Blast attack, so, they don't have to worry about the thralls getting in their way when they're trying to target adventurers, or your players in this situation. Now, aside from being bigger and bulkier and much more grotesque than the normal Mind Flayer, they also have axe hands. I don't know how else to put it, their hands are literally axes. Well, two of their hands are anyways. What would normally be the two main arms of any other creature have been replaced by massive blades. These creatures are very clearly meant to do one thing and do that thing very well and that thing is slicing adventurers in half. It does possess a third arm, which is kind of just a claw, really, that it uses for opening doors and mechanical things, but in combat, this doesn't really come into play. Its large form and physical attacks are definitely the biggest thing that separate it from its regular Mind Flayer brethren. However, the one thing that makes them a lot more similar is the fact that, of course, like any other Mind Flayer, this Illithid eats brains. It has a tentacle attack, which functions exactly the same way that the Mind Flayer's tentacle attack does, and if it manages to grapple and stun its target, it has an extract brain ability that functions very much the same way the regular Mind Flayers does as well. So essentially what you're looking at here is a Mind Flayer that gives up its ability to cast spells and its intelligence to be just a hulk, for lack of a better term. One thing though that does differentiate this creature from a lot of the other just big brutish monsters that we see, and by differentiates I mean makes it not just a big sack of hit points, is an ability called Overdrive. There are actually two parts to this. It has a defensive overdrive and an attack overdrive. As a bonus action or a reaction, the Thune Hulk can overdrive its body, literally forcing it beyond its limits. When it uses defensive overdrive, it gains advantage on all saves and skill checks that it makes until the beginning of its next turn. When it uses its attack overdrive, it gains advantage on all attack rolls until the start of its next turn. However, there is a catch. In order to do this, the creature is literally tearing itself apart. Naturally, this causes damage to the creature, 2d6 in fact. So yes, the creature is going to be a lot more likely to inflict damage or a lot less likely to get manipulated or polymorphed or something like that, but it is going to cause some residual damage to the creature. This is kind of a neat ability because the creature is not going to want to do this every turn if it can help it, and I think it provides a really interesting narrative tool. If you describe this creature charging the front line of the party in its massive form, and they see it literally ripping limb from limb as blood starts to shoot out from between its joints and such while it's just crushing the frontline fighters. It's just a really cool visual aspect, I guess. The other component that goes into making a Thune Hulk is it also has magical resistance. And yes, I know most Illithids have magical resistance where they have an advantage on saves and that sort of thing. But this creature actually takes half damage from acid, cold, fire, sonic, and lightning damage. Again, this creature is designed to be a frontline tank and brute to provide the Illithids with that meat shield that they don't already have. And because of their strong ties with the rest of their Illithid brethren and the fact that they literally have to be created, it goes without saying that this makes an excellent monster to put in a dungeon where there are Illithids. This can be a great way to break up the monotony of your players are entering a Mind Flayer stronghold. They're not going to necessarily expect to see one of these things. There are all the classic Mind Flayer companions and other monsters that they utilize sometimes, as well as thralls and all that kind of stuff, but they're not going to see this coming. Another good utilization of this as well is just as a wandering monster near a Mind Flayer home. Say you have some Mind Flayers that are holed up in a cave on the coastline and no one else really knows they're there. 
but their Thun Hulk manages to break loose or its controller dies in some kind of battle and it's just kind of wandering around. Maybe the players find it before the Mind Flayers do and then they have to deal with that situation. And who knows, the Mind Flayers may even show up mid-battle and then realize what's going on, re-establish control over their Thun Hulk and then try to turn on the players. But if you want to take the story in a not all monsters have to be bad guys kind of way, what if you had some Mind Flayers who were on the run from other Mind Flayers? As I briefly mentioned before, the flesh that goes into making a Thune Hulk comes from other Mind Flayers. What if some of these Mind Flayers who were doomed to this fate to become Thune Hulks and didn't want that to happen for obvious reasons, chose to escape their brethren and go on the run? Maybe the party encounters them and initially think, oh crap, we have to fight these Mind Flayers now, but they're not actually bad guys, they're just on the run from the other Illithids back home. This could create kind of an interesting moral situation for the players, as well as are they going to just let these guys die, kind of leave them to their own devices, and maybe that might come back to haunt them later if they do. Or maybe it'll come back to haunt them if they don't. That's kind of the beauty in decisions like this, is they really don't know. This is a monster that is notorious for just being pure evil, but... Who's to say if they're all evil? I guess that's ultimately up to you as a DM to decide what course that goes. The other question that comes from this situation is why are the Illithids making Thune Hulks? I mean, obviously they complement their abilities very well, but if they're building up multiple Thune Hulks, maybe 10, 20 of them even, what purpose could it serve? If the players find out this information from some Mind Flayers on the run, then maybe they'll be intrigued to go check it out and put a stop to it. At the end of the day though, I think this just adds a bit of diversity to a creature that we all love, but doesn't necessarily have a ton of diversity within it. That is all I have on Illithids today though, so hopefully you enjoyed hearing me talk about the Thune Hulk, and hopefully it inspired you to come up with some ideas for your game. If you do decide to drop one of these bad boys in your game, please let me know, I'd love to hear about it. I actually really enjoy reading about all the crazy stuff you guys come up with based on the monsters we present here. And some of those ideas I've 100% used in my game before, or at the very least have plans to. If you do like what I do here, please leave a like, subscribe, I have at least one new video every week, and uh, honestly, by you guys just spreading the word, that is a huge help to me, and I, I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.